you all for this kind invitation. Uh, I'm happy to be here in Plovdiv, uh, in Bulgaria, a city that I was supposed to visit when I was the general director of RAI, but I missed that that time 10 years ago, so I have this new opportunity now. Thank you. Uh, as we are all aware, the media sector is going through a huge transformation, technological, financial, and industrial, which is gradually disrupting and at the same time reshaping the media landscape, people consumption habits, and the key features of traditional media professions, including journalism. The multiplication of platform channels and audiovisual offers, the explosion of online individual uses have changed the rules of the game. And the way information is proposed to citizens has become one of the key challenges of our day, notably from a democracy and citizens' rights perspective. All kinds of media are facing unheard of strategic challenges and struggling to survive in a new environment. At the same time, trying to keep the essence of their role and mission in society. The transition from traditional media to the new digital offers and proposal is still in progress. And no clear winner or clear indication of the future industrial models and if and how they will actually work has emerged so far. What is sure it is that these challenges are particularly engaging for public service media, who at different degrees, but substantially all over Europe, are also <coughs> suffering from the consequences of the great public finance crisis that is undermining the traditional institutions created during the years for welfare and public interest policies. In fact, I do consider public media as an integral part of such historical system in terms of their role for citizens' empowerment and for their independence from commercial constraints in communication. In view of the overwhelming growth of the visual office, more difficult individual economic conditions, it is not surprising, though, that such role is more and more debated among citizens and politicians alike, and the amount of the required public investment fears to be questioned. At the same time, and in connection with the weakening of public service media, political interference, de facto limitation to independence, and more authoritarian attitudes are spreading in new alarming cases every year. It is now evident that the issue of finding a new legitimacy is a crucial strategic challenge and a necessity for public service media. As former uh, France Television president, that I often quote Rémi Fimlain, once said, we now have to answer at all levels this question raised from our citizens. A quoi sert-il le média public? What's the use? As professionals, we must be fully aware of the need to always try to find an answer to this question, to consider that in order to survive the new ocean of communication, distinctiveness and quality must be at the top of our priorities, and contribution to society must be the measure of our success. In such a context, public service media have a specific opportunity to reaffirm their role and their mission opportunities in information. The developments in technology and individual consumption we have been witnessing are creating new problems in the relationship between media and citizenship. A new public is emerging, a public that is more and more aware and demanding, more free to access the information they want and to choose contents and platforms. However, considering the sheer dimension of the offers we get and the real jungle of information and players acting in the current integrated media system, this audience is also exposed to risk of misinformation and often not to skill enough to cope with the danger that this richness may also lead to. In this fast, diversified, dense environment, we are largely exposed to bias and trigger information. Due to the social networks, viral diffusion, contents can be spread out globally without any professional intermediation, often exploiting people's moods and popular trends as accelerators to create a sort of dangerous emotional doping. It is then vital that journalists and media organizations give up the temptation of adopting easy and dangerous ways of pleasing the audience and that they strongly affirm the role 
to correct to inform and to improve citizen critical thinking. We must be deeply aware that if media professionals choose to swap their information mission for a million market-oriented collection of deep clicks and likes in Facebook profiles, they are putting in danger the future we are living together. This is where the opportunity lies for national, regional, and public media to make a difference. Commercial organizations more and more constrained by economic difficulties and the disruption of their business models tend to actually diminish the role and scope of action of professional journalists. While focusing on increasing their digital contacts, sometimes just passively following the social network trending topics. Information are gathered often for free from many different, sometimes unqualified and certain sources. User generated content, if not properly scrutinized or certainly very useful, is to be spread as a weapon of propaganda to target the mindset of public opinion. And we've seen this many times in recent years. Foreign and local correspondence have been kept or eliminated, in depth investigation reduced, and on the spot professional analysis risk to be substituted by news gathered from what I like to call the universal tube. In such an environment, hasty stereotypes, cliche, and misleading information in the virtual sphere are rapidly growing, and they have constitute now an important factor. In the sad process we are witnessing of building walls, spreading fears, and creating mistrust in our real lives. Ignorance is feeding cultural, religious, and social divisions at a very historical moment when we need more reciprocal knowledge to keep our societies open and inclusive. Public media are, theoretically at least, perfectly suited to counter such risk, and at the same time reaffirm their legitimacy as a trust and a valuable reference point for the citizens in a confused world. Independent from commercial revenues and leveraging on the rich and competent journalistic resources, they could guarantee, just as an example, a more direct territorial coverage of events at regional, national and international level through skilled, dedicated professionals who can provide a first-hand picture of what is happening and report facts as seen through their own eyes and judged with their own brains. At the same time, public services could work together to set recognized professional and deontological standards on the use of social media and create specific tools to analyze user-generated content. Investing in information and professional quality, adopting new advanced methodologies, borrowing the best practice is the answer. Media freedom, though of course, a crucial acquisition that we must always defend is no more sufficient in the new digital, digitally connected environment. We need to accompany it with higher quality standards, with a very professional, correct and reliable offer. Journalism is evolving and must evolve. The session presented today is about constructive journalism and the principle that it is based upon. I'm not an expert nor a journalist myself, but the effort to explore new ways of providing facts that include a framework indispensable to put them in the proper context and that guarantee a broader and fuller picture of events probably enables a better understanding of real issues from the audience. Also, the idea of proposing possible solution or direct solution for the teams reported is a way to deal with the more <coughs> fragile societies and vulnerable public opinions have been talking about, a way of empowering citizens. So I welcome in principle such developments and proposals. A different media world requires also new practices and new ideas and new techniques, provided that we never forget that journalism is about information, analysis and the ontological duties, dependence, intellectual honesty, responsibility. And that it is about facts and perspectives rather than just feeding emotions to the public. The new integrated environment also overcome national frontiers and the borders between traditional and digital media. This implies the necessity to go beyond the national sector mindset and think, think as a system. Issues can be treated effectively only by means of cross-cutting the global approach able to connect all the concerned actors and to open a dialogue and exchange of visions at an international level. As a media cooperation actor, 
in the Mediterranean area, COPAM is doing just that, promoting training and capacity building as well as peer-to-peer -peer exchange initiatives involving media, institutions and civil societies in order to improve practices, co- and self-regulation systems and the application of international standards. A few weeks ago I was in Casablanca for a conference that occasionally World Press Freedom Day and I was surprised and pleased at the same time to see how much the issues and problems you are discussing here today are part of the main concern and hopes of the colleagues from the southern shore of the Mediterranean, working in a completely different and often difficult cultural environment, but perfectly conscious of their responsibilities towards citizens, absolutely eager to improve their competence through exchanges and the sharing of techniques and experiences. As a follow-up of that conference, together with ASBU and with new colleagues, we are now planning a specific project of multilateral exchanges on good practices on the problem of hate speech. Finally, I would like to add that media and public service media in particular do not live in an empty space. They are deeply rooted in their societies and territories, in their political and social environment, in their national and historical background. The challenges they are facing are and must be felt as challenging for all citizens and institutions in their relevant countries. It is then indispensable that public service media be open and responsive to whatever suggestion comes from outside and keep a strong connection with the environment around them, be it the creative industry, other media institutions, public opinion. In order to achieve that, they have to keep alive a multilateral and global conversation that necessarily include all the stakeholders, including schools, family, university, common people, so that with broader, more inclusive alliance, they may succeed in raising the awareness of the whole civil society about their role. In fact, even when, like today, we talk about journalism and information, we are also talking about broader issues like education and culture. Citizens, especially younger generation, must understand that high professional standards that may be guaranteed by the preservation of reliable and trusted public service are important not only as a value in itself, but more than that, they are a fundamental tool for real public debate, for civil participation and cultural expression in a world for a real democracy. Thank you.